Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's been far too long since I've seen your beautiful faces. Beautiful. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting with me today, as always, Alex. Hello. Back people. from a break. If you live in the Americas, of course, Thanksgiving break. You yes. live everywhere else. It was just a regular Thursday for you. Um, but yep. nonetheless, we give you thanks and our apologies because you don't live in America. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah alex we have been on break um, yes we really have. i wanted to not only open this show with our normal stuff but before we get into the mumbo jumbo mm -hmm. first off i want to hear how the audiences was going leave a comment below tell me how your thanksgiving break what games did you play that's what i want to hear but alex mm. we're starting it off very quickly i want to know how was your break it was it was good. I mean, I gave thanks to a bunch of video games, mm. and literally, I played GTA San Andreas the whole time. The whole time. Have you beaten this video game? I have not. Do you think you ever will? Yes. <laughs> I've. I so this game I seems incredibly long. So I have no idea how long this game is because okay. I've never actually beaten this one. I've been Vice City. I've been the other ones. Mm. I'm going by how far because you know ever after every mission you get a, a respect. You know. Right. There, and we have a respect bar, and it goes up, you know, every time. I'm going by how far the respect bar is up in on the bar. Mm. I haven't even hit halfway on the respect bar. Okay. So I don't what know if I should. What does this bar do? So I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay, cool. So it's, <laughs> it's definitely not clear looking, what it does then. I never bothered looking it up. I mean, if people could say it could probably, uh, you probably gain more money throughout the properties you buy. Uh, which may, would make sense. Uh, I mean, it could be to where pe uh, not as many gangs start shooting at you at the first thing they see you. <laughs> okay. Um, could be a yeah, lot of that, stuff. That, yeah, it could be a lot of stuff. I don't know. I've never played this uh, game, just just so the achievers know. I, I, I have no idea what this game is. So um, I am enjoying myself, though. Okay, that's good. I, I mean, clearly, you, you, you're playing a good bit. Yeah, literally... I haven't like it. It'll tell you. I haven't been. I haven't played Apex. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Apex, I, I gave it a break, and mm. I was like, you know what? Let me play some GTA. Uh, we've been playing some Halo Master Chief Collection. Right. I've Ma been playing majority Master Collection. Halo Infinite. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured this way, man. Yeah, Halo Infinite. Yeah. I've been playing majority Halo Infinite. Been playing some Pokemon. <clears throat> Um, yeah. With the wife, we we always do that with the with the new Pokemon. So we yeah. catch everything and trade and all that stuff. That's really fun. That's in mm -hmm. my kind of pastime. The majority of my gaming time goes towards finishing up some things. So I have my game of the year discussions ready. Far Cry Six. I'm trying to clean up. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't gone back to it. <laughs> I yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I. I am not enjoying myself, honestly. If I'm, being hey, honest. I was about to say brief thing. What, what would you say? You're not very, enjoying yourself. Very, yeah, very briefly. It's just, it's just because I don't know. It's almost like I don't know. I just played so much of these games. I think is what it is. Yeah. Right. I can't tell you if it's a bad video game. I don't think it is. But mm. I've just played so many of these. All right, let's go do this outpost. Um, we got this mission to go outpost, do. Man. Let's let's clear out this checkpoint. Let's do this thing, you know. So I I think I've just in some sort of fatigue, and I, I can't tell you if it's the video game or not. I don't think it is. Again, I think if someone came up to me and was like, "Hey, should I play this Far Cry 6? And I go, "If mm -hmm. you're looking for Far Cry, definitely. Like if if that sounds like fun to you, yeah, go go mm -hmm. for it." And now, maybe I'm just you... Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say if I feel like if you would have uh, skipped five in mm. new dawn let's say That's you skipped, or even skipped or even skipped new dawn mm. let's say you played five stopped there didn't play new dawn and came back to this one would you f like it more or will it not affect you at all i probably would i think i think i would i think if i because it's not even just far cries i mean just off the top of my head i mean horizon is kind of you know that's like that um mm -hmm. i mean there's so many games that are these open world mechanics where you got this thing you go destroy i mean crackdown even though again these aren't games i've played recently but this is off the top of my head For sure yeah yeah i was just kind of every time i pick it up i'm like all right let's go let's go through and, and a very serious it, it did it. catch my attention with a very specific story beat that i just passed um okay it did kind of bother me what happened and i can't tell you without spoiling the game well spoiling but, yeah mm -hmm. but something happened and i went why did 
Why did you Why do did that, that though? Be- because the solution to me would have been like, just mm. throw it. But got it. I don't know. Maybe you couldn't have or something. I don't know. I can't wait for you to get to this part so I can at least ask you. Maybe I saw it the wrong way, but a, a, a certain thing happened and I looked and I'm like, did you have to do that? Or can you mm. just, you know, but. See, that makes know. me I, actually want want to play the game to yeah. get to that part to talk about it. Yeah. Because for uh, between the two of us, I played Cyberpunk. I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's a great game, but I did enjoy myself from the story. Yeah. And the bugs and everything did not break the game for me mm. because I thought they were hilarious. Yeah. It was it almost was, like a, an enjoyment factor, right? Yeah, it was an enjoyment yeah, factor, and I was, so yeah. So it's it's just like now I'm wanting. I'm like, hmm, I want to try. I go to that Far Cry mission, and see what happens. Yeah, I yeah, I I think the only way I'm gonna get through this game is if I just mainline. If I just okay. mainline the story, I think I'm gonna get through it. And honestly, that's what I was gonna do anyway. <laughs> yeah. And um, there was this particularly <clears throat> frustrating part. <clears throat> oh my god, Alex! This particularly <clears throat> frustrating part that I w- was just very upset that they put out i was just maybe i don't have a right weapon or something but i kept dying and i know for a fact Mm -hmm. certain things were happening in that level that aren't supposed to happen you know very i'm Mm. gonna very quickly notice you're trying to escape in a truck okay you have to keep the truck from blowing up but i think what was happening was npc enemy npcs in the outer world were interacting with the mission Instead, instead of set enemies that are supposed to spawn. So these mm-hmm. trucks are supposed to spawn to shoot at you. And you're supposed yep. to shoot at them back. There's these helicopters that are also supposed to spawn. But I noticed every now and then there was just a guy randomly throughout the mission. It wasn't mm-hmm. like a set spot. And it wasn't like a noticeable thing. That's why I think it's people that are roaming the world. Okay. Had an RPG and he shoots you. But you can't Ooh. shoot him because the moment you see him, he's already shot you. So I don't know if that was a glitch, if that's if if I was doing something wrong, if I was supposed to do something else, but there is no physical way you could kill that guy. So I was like, maybe I'm bugged out. And I finally got through it, but the only way I got through it was the guy didn't spawn. He just didn't come out. It went, that whole mission, I didn't get shot with any rockets. But but every now and then a rocket would just kill me. No oh, idea that's why. Weird. No idea where it would come from half the time. Sometimes it came <laughs> from the helicopters too, which I was like, maybe I have to kill him faster. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm rambling, but I get it. I get strange it. Strange game, but I am going to try and stick with it because uh, a part of me really does want to see how this ends because yeah, I do like the uh, Alex. His name J- J- John, yeah, John Carlos. Carlos thank you. I do like that character and I do like his dynamic with his son. Yes, and I just want to see that. So okay, I want to see yeah. what happens with that. That's so I'm, why. I'm that's the this. main reason why I want to play it because I do enjoy that actor, and I want to give him that, uh, you know, my that attention yes. of mine. Yeah. I've always loved his roles. I was like, you know what? I like him enough that I I want to stick with it. Yeah. So I was like, I, interesting. I well, I do want to give it a shot. Hopefully, I could play it before Halo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Halo the thing. My so, yeah, achievers. Yeah, we're we're in that sweet spot right now where we have till the eighth, and then we play the campaign of Halo. Mm-hmm. And then nothing's taking me from away from that. Yeah, and then preferably by the either by the end of the year or the beginning of next year, we have our game of the year discussion out. So I'm gonna try. I oh, want to yeah. really try and finish these games so I can have a full list of, of expectations. And and Alex, speaking of game mm-hmm. of the year, we do still need to do the game of uh, t- uh game awards. That's what it's called, right? Mm-hmm. Game the game awards mm-hmm. uh predictions because predictions? that goes out. I th- December ninth. Next week. No, no, no. December ninth. Okay, so mm-hmm. we still have a little while. We're we gonna have, try we and get that week, done. A little bit over a week. We're gonna try and get that done maybe early next week or this coming week. I got week. you. Anyways, <clears throat> Achiever, it's gonna be a short pimp today. So you know where to go. YouTube, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, share. That helps the algorithm. Thank you so much for everyone who's already done that. Podcast service of your choice. Remember, five star review. Leave a nice funny thing. Make fun of me or something. I dare you, fucking Do cowards. It. Do it. Three. Patreon.com slash achievers if you want to help us financially. Very quick one this week. Alex, really quick, these are just the rapid fire things I want to get through you. Um, and then we're going to get into a roundup. First thing, Alex, I know you did hey. it. Achievers, I don't know if it's still open. Actually, I'll check right now. But we did the Xbox Museum. 
This was mm-hmm. the coolest thing I might have ever done as this like almost markety thing that happened. But like this was very cool, Jeevers. Now, if you didn't see this, this was a museum virtual museum that you could go in as your Microsoft account and it would either show mm. you like their set things that you had. So like mm. there was uh the details of the original Xbox, how Halo started, the Xbox 360, the new series S and X systems, a bunch of like things about that. There's certain facts I didn't even know. There was a bunch of facts I didn't know. Like then, Microsoft tried to buy Nintendo in 1999. Yep. Yeah, and they. Oh no, it's hilarious. So yeah. you should actually. Oh yeah, we'll, we should talk about this one day. I read there's a huge article you can go read at Cheers right now. Actually, if you are surprised about that fact, he just said it's a 20 year Xbox article. And um, just to really quickly, I don't want to spoil it. Article's a great read. But uh, yeah, so they so Microsoft went to Nintendo and basically pitched uh, to buy them, and they and I'm not kidding here were laughed out of the room. The guy who I don't remember his name. That's right. I, but the I, I, I but the guy who was there said he has never been that <laughs> embarrassed in his whole professional career. Because I'm not joking when they're like, "Oh, they laughed." No, they literally laughed at them. They were trying to give them this presentation, and the <laughs> people just kept laughing at them. And it is the most funniest thing to read on a piece of paper like, and picturing, get out of my face. yeah, picturing these business guys trying to talk to these to to the heads of Nintendo's, and they're just straight up laughing at them. Oh my god, it's awesome. crazy. Yeah, go, go please go read that. That I did not do that justice. Does that man still work for Microsoft? No, no, I don't believe so. I I'm, and again, I'm just it's been months since I read Sark. I need to go back to it. Mm. Um Oh, gee, you can hear this. Sorry, let me mute that. But I have I have the museum here so I can talk about it a little better. But yeah, yeah. That was I mean, that was awesome. But uh yeah, you I can like go it. here, but if you do sign in, you have your own gamer kind of Alex, what do you say? Your own gamer kind of museum. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah it's your, there. your gamer history throughout the years, you know? Mm-hmm. You can go there and it'll tell you what's your most played video game. What, what, uh, <laughs> what is, what's the first achievement you ever got? What's your first, what's the first time you played your most played video game? Um, I actually have mine up right here and I'll go tell yeah, what, you guys. What's, what um, so it's an, it's a, it, you know, we're Xbox fans. So, uh, what, what was your first achievement? Cause mine was the one of the bullet true achievement for Halo 3. I don't actually remember my achievement. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, does it show it on there? Yeah, it does. I I, I just lo- loaded in. Um, I could tell you my first game. <laughs> my first game on a 360 was Bionic Commando Rearmed. No one knows what that is. But um, my first achievement was One Man Army, which I actually don't remember. I'm pretty sure that's from that game. Um, Maybe Bionic Commando Rearmed. And then my first Xbox 360 game. Um, I started on the Xbox 360. So I don't have a history on it on the original Xbox. Um, but then my first Xbox One game was Dead Rising Three, and then the Series <laughs> X game was Assassin's Creed Valhalla. But Alex, what is um, what is your most is, played video game? There is a one man army achievement in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Did you ever play that? No, I didn't play that game. Okay. It's definitely Grand not Theft Auto Four. So, mm-hmm. say again. I'm sorry. What were you asking? Uh, what was your most played game? Uh, it says Apex, which I was Apex? surprised because I didn't. I thought I would play Halo Three back in the day way mm-hmm. more than one of Apex, but I guess it was Apex. Mine will shock no one. Destiny two, yeah. Uh, let's see. My most played by the year. This is hilarious. Twenty seventeen Mass Effect Andromeda because I did p- two playthroughs. Mine too. I did two playthroughs. Twenty eighteen yeah. Fortnite and then twenty nineteen through twenty twenty one was Destiny two. I like yeah, mine for twenty 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 one was Apex and I was like, wow, I played nothing else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Apex was the predominant. Top five mm-hmm. most played games for me by genre shooter, Apex Legends, Action Adventure, Destiny mm-hmm. 2, RPG, the original Destiny, Shooter, Fortnite, RPG, Mass Effect 2. So four games as a service games and then Mass Effect 2. That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah right? Super cool, though. Super this cool is super experience. cool. Yeah, if you have an Xbox or if you just want to go look at the regular thing without signing in, you could do that, too. This is just a really cool thing for everyone to go to. Yeah. But uh, I will close this out now because I will... I'll just keep reading it because <laughs> it's so much fun. One of the mo- one of the multiplayer games that I played, it's a Dead Space 3 demo. Yep, that was me too, because I yeah. think we did that together. Yeah, um, it was just, it's just crazy. We played like, the multiplayer together. Like, yeah, which I don't feel is right because I played Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Which was before that. 
So I, th- I, 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 I do question a couple of the things, but I'm yeah. like, okay, whatever. Not yeah. important. Yeah. Uh, rumor about bugs. Okay. Final Fantasy Tactics Remasters has appeared on an online front. Uh, well, something we haven't seen in a while has popped up in an online listing, adding to even more conjecture about this supposed Final Fantasy Tactics Remaster that has appeared in the GeoForce leak, but now is also appeared in something called Instant Gaming. And the only plan for it it had listed was the Epic Game Store, and it had a 2023 release date. So, could still be not real. Could still be real. Who knows? The Actually, partly the reason I actually brought this up, Alex, uh, and you're going to be hearing G-Force throughout this entire episode today because we just keep finding out more and more things. Um, but I almost want to revisit that leak one time. Maybe that would be an episode we do. Uh, because if you remember, Alex, when we went over that, I vehemently said all those were just completely wrong. Mm-hmm. I said none of those exist. Almost none of them. I said some of them were placeholders that they probably knew were coming out. The rest mm. of them were just garbage. And we're just like, we'll put this in there if it ever happens. Well, but, I mean, there was a lot that were real. Like, for example, the GTA trilogy. Yes, and, which I, um, I remember specifically going, they're not making that. <laughs> and I'm completely wrong. I was completely wrong. Um, um, what were some other things? Is, well, they're saying there's one that comes out. Um, Chrono Cross. Apparently, yes. there's this big thing. And apparently, supposed there's the rumor is that they're supposed to be coming out on December first or December second, which is literally next week. Yeah, which is crazy. Can't, yeah, that can't be real. Well, if it is, I mean, I'll eat my foot. Well, people <laughs> were uh, actually debating if um, uh, if it's going to be announced at game? the Game Awards. People dislike that game uh, because they loved Chrono Trigger. Trigger. Chrono Trigger is the good people, one, right? People love Chrono Trigger. People didn't love Chrono Cross because it had like this weird battle system. Um, I did not play a lot of it. That? Chrono Cross is a sequel to Chrono Trigger, yes. Okay, because I've yeah. never played them. So I think I played maybe an hour of Chrono Trigger, mm. but that was it. Yeah, it, it, but everyone loves Chrono Trigger, and everyone has always like talked the ish about Chrono Cross, um, because they change a lot about it. Like, mm. uh, not important, but if they if they ever do that remaster, I could definitely see it being announced. If that is true, it it could be probably announced at the Game Awards. Sounds like something. Uh, like be shocked if it was announced and released a day. Mm-hmm. It is out now. Yeah, and it's out right now. Like that whole thing. Uh, j- this is a biggest of big rumors because no one has substantiated any of it other than what we've already talked about. But apparently, PlayStation is going to announce a big quote, big remake end quote in December. We don't know what it is. We just know it's quote unquote big remake. I don't go behind these kind of vague rumors, but I just want to bring it to everyone's attention that it is pointing towards Bloodborne a little more. I can't uh, wait. Do you know? I know for sure that's being remade. The question is when, and it could mm-hmm. be announced sooner rather than later. Who knows? And it I would get wait. people's <laughs> um, mind back on PlayStation because Xbox has oh, yeah. been dominating the dominating. conversation the last two, three months with Forza and now Halo, uh, mm-hmm. and especially with all this Game Pass. So it, as soon as they announce a Bloodborne remaster, everyone looks at Sony now for the next yep. uh, couple of weeks, at least. This is a fun one for uh, me and Alex because we loved this. Um, <laughs> so Jeff Grubb dropped some more juice for us. This time referencing the beloved online title One vs. One Hundred. For everyone who doesn't know, the original One vs. One Hundred was an online show that ran weekly on the Xbox 360 in 2009 with one player playing as, quote, the one, end quote, against a group of 100 others made up of the mob, uh, quote, unquote, with the rest making up the crowd. The one had the opportunity to win 10,000 Microsoft points while the remaining members of the mob split the winnings, and each received a free game if they were able to defeat them. This was an old thing that I used to mess around with. It was super fun. I think mm-hmm. I made it into the 100 once. I I yeah, I can't remember, but I think I sucked horribly at this I game. Think I, I think I, I mean, I was... I was like 11. So they, they were definitely right. answering questions that were not for 11 year olds. So yeah. I did not do very good either. But it was very fun just to be in there because it was just a cool thing to do. For sure. Um, I, it, but uh, yeah, we played this out on and off. If this actually does come back, which if you do read more about it, um, Jeff Grubb does go on to say uh, it is coming back. They're definitely making the game and it seems like it's coming from Alt Space VR team. They're spearheading the project and all the avatars we saw in the Microsoft Teams thing last week. They're going to use those (laughs) avatars and bring that stuff in, apparently. 
and he was referencing this whole and this is a uh, video games chronicle by the way they're like referencing all this stuff but yeah he was referencing this kind of so phil did this um trivia th uh he was he was like gonna be a part of this whole trivia thing but it actually didn't end up working out because of technical issues but he did kind of hint at one versus 100 is coming back with how he was talking about things. So this is for sure happening. I do trust Jeff Grubb. And on top of that, it looks like Phil was heavily hinting that this is coming back, which is super exciting. I, Alex, I would love one versus 100 back because it was this guy's kind of fun. Like, hey, there's this thing that's happening. It's almost like a TV show and you can watch as if, you know, people get it right. And it was, you know, of course it was an actual show, but this yeah. was something you could kind of watch uh, online, too. Yeah, I I don't remember a lot of it, so I'm excited to like if it is real to go back to it because I'm like it's been so many years. Yeah. I'm like I wonder if because I, I like I wonder if I'll be good at it now. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so too, and I hope we have um, almost Jeopardy style like uh, mm -hmm. like different. Um, yeah, because I love trivia category days. You know, like one week is movies and the other next week mm -hmm. is music sure. or something. Who knows? TV shows that'll be me. Well, we have yet another confirmed, and we're actually in our talk for the week, guys. Well, we have yet another confirmed GeForce Leak game coming in the way of the Marvel MMO, MMO that was shown in that GeForce Leak. This we learned from our favorite and most fun of learning about anything, which is an investor meeting. Development of this so far in this excerpt actually is from, um, let me get the source for you, Your Gamer. So they go on to okay. say this part. So development of this so far unannounced MMO is led by Jack Emmerich who co-founded Cryptic Studios, designed and helmed City of Heroes, and currently leads the 10-year-old DC Universe online game that is still going on as of recording and is still getting regular updates, Cheevers, just so, just in case mm -hmm. you know. This is still going on. I remember when this launched. I, I vehemently remember this launching. Yes, PS3. <laughs> it was only on PS3 or PC. Oh, my God. I remember when the updates would take four ever oh, alex. i would have to leave it on overnight oh alex I, I when i originally got the game first off when i originally got the game bought it from a GameStop. i, I bought it from off. gamestop they forgot to give me the product code so when i got home mm -hmm. i didn't, couldn't i didn't, couldn't do anything mm -hmm. with it it was just an empty case basically so game went back the next day got the game came back then i downloaded it and boy when i saw mm -hmm. the gigs mm -hmm. in that i didn't fully understand gigs back then but i but i did know it would take forever and mm -hmm. it, it did uh mm -hmm. it was just jeez that was awful it took forever, man. Now, that is all we know for now, but it's worth noting Daybreak Game Company had reportedly worked on a Marvel MMORPG a few years ago, but it was apparently canceled, sparking a round of layoffs late 2018. It's also worth noting that Cryptic Studios worked on Marvel Universe Online in 2006 before Microsoft canceled it in 2008. Marvel mm -hmm. Universe Online was later reborn as Cryptic's Champions Online. Gazillion Entertainment's Marvel Heroes launched in 2013, but it was shut down mm -hmm. at late 2017. Rip. I missed that game. None of, none of this, of course, and this is uh, the end of the article, by the way. Uh, this is me. None of this is guaranteed, of course. The latest we would see this is most likely somewhere in the 2023 to 2024 time frame. Now, I never played the Marvel Heroes one. Did I that did. play similar to DC Universes Online, or no. was it better? Was it worse? I would say it had, it, it did a much better. And it depends on what you mean by worse. First off, um, is that the one that said it was like a Marvel Omega Hero? Or something yes, like that? Marvel Heroes okay. Omega was the launch that came on consoles. Got it. Okay, and I think that was done relatively well, especially adapting the game to controller. Mm. Um, and I had a great time. I actually uh, bought like Venom and stuff, like and, like mm -hmm. some champions that they sold. Um, yeah and it was slayers because they released omega and then like canceled the game like three yeah. or four months after and xbox was like where we fund you the money <laughs> which was awesome yeah and see i but, feel like i would have played dc universe online more apart from it i feel like it just not the ui but like the way the menus were yeah it was just a little too too much yeah it, it was too much going it's on. because it's meant for, too much. it's because it's meant for pc that's why yeah i mean it, that's one of those games where i play and i like i like i like what you're doing here if I need to play this, I need to be on my PC because it's just, it's just, it doesn't feel, we it feels so weird on a controller. The me. amount of times I had to do that fucking first Brainiac mission, oh my god. Oh, I've done it so many times. On I've PS3, so I've done times. it like on PS4, I've done it on Xbox. Yeah, I've, tri <laughs> I've tried multiple times to get into this and I just can't. I, 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 can't, I, I yeah. can't. And, and it's fine. It's just, it, Honestly, it's not really my part of the game. I know it's funny knowing that I love Destiny so much, but I'm not like super into MMORPGs just because... 
I end up playing something else eventually. Mm-hmm. Right. And see, I tried I tried getting into Elder Scrolls Online for a little while, and mm-hmm. I just I fell out of that. Yeah. And I think um maybe if I had people to play with, maybe I would be more into it. Maybe that's why I've stuck with Destiny Song is because I have a regular plan I play with. But yeah, yeah, that yeah, I just I have never gotten into it. Now I will be curious to see this Marvel MMO. Will it be a DC Universe esque kind of thing going on where it is kind of like the same thing and that, or are they going to go for something different? Um, are they going to go for an MMO light and try to make it a more console centric thing? Um, who knows? Mm. I would love to see a little bit of both. Honestly, I would love to see almost like a light version made for consoles and then the heavy shit on PC or something. Who knows? Would you see it going away as uh the type of game as a top down kind of like ultimate alliance or would you see it more like kind of like wow i would s- what would you prefer or what i prefer i would prefer, prefer about ultimate alliance okay i uh, so uh, it's tropic almost kind of yeah. view and see, I, I, I would prefer the the wow version instead what is wow is like behind like third person yeah third person yeah 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 interesting maybe yeah. i would prefer that because in my in my mind, Marvel Ultimate Alliance is awesome because you see all four people, but it's only one per. If it is okay. only one person, yeah, probably. In wow. your world, think of Destiny's uh, tower. That's <laughs> yeah. their person. Would yeah, you prefer no, I, that? Know. I know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know what it is. But but yeah, I no, I think since we're only one person, you you may, you make a strong argument. I, I would probably go with the yep. with just the the the, the two, but or okay. sorry, with just the third person because that does sound like a lot better to deal with versus going the other way with it. Alex, this next story comes from us, from our good friends at Windows Central. Always making great content. Now, I was going to piece together some of my own stories here, but I think they put it so well that I'm just Mm -hmm. going to read from the actual article. Now, I want everyone that's listening to this video to go give this a click. It's over at Windows Central, written by Jez Corden. The beautiful Jez Corden. That That guy knows his shit. All right, so we have two projects that were shown off, right? So we have Compulsion, who made We Happy Few. That is, of course, purchased by Microsoft. Making Project Midnight. Now, I'm going to see if I can do a thing. But while I do a thing, I'm going to also talk. Um, so let's, let's start with what we're seeing. And then, Achievers, I'm going to show you what this actually looks like, because it looks wild. And there's no way the words that are going to come out of my mouth are actually going to show you what this looks like. So this is a little bit uh, ways into the article. So currently codenamed Midnight, this upcoming title is supposed a third-person action game set in a dark, fantastical world. Some of the game's early concept artwork can be seen above, which I'm about to show you guys. They represent the game's protagonist alongside warped harpy-like humanoids that appear to descend through various iterations of mutation. <clears throat> and then they go on to describe more. The thing Midnight is described as a quote coming of age end quote tale, drawing upon inspirations from America's Deep South. The game features dark and large fantastical beasts with a strong Southern Gothic mm. vibe. The game is wholly single player experience with what has been described to me as quote a strong story end quote. And oh. then um, right now, Jez has no info on launch timing, but we're likely looking at the next couple years for the of- uh, official reveal. And even full launch. Now, it reminds see. me of, of a gothic steampunkish version of Witcher. Okay. Oh, this is well, perfect. Like, when I see the pictures, this is perfect. Um, like with with, with uh, when achievers, you could see the picture. Um, the middle one or like the outfits, it gives me very Witcher vibes. And then the, the especially the outside pictures, it gives me the, like the, the creature vibes that you let's mm. say. Let's say, I, like, I, I can remember right now, like, running through Witcher in the swampy area fighting these little weird witch things. The the picture on the left, I would see that in that game. Yeah, Achievers. It's, it's on YouTube right now, just in case you have it, like, on uh Like, it gives me very, so, it's like Witcher meets, like, uh, some, like, not Dishonored, but, like, something more steampunkish, gothic type. No, 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 definitely. I mean, look at this. This is definitely, like, a, <clears throat> right there, you nail it. Goth- this is very gothic. Just like they say mm-hmm. in here, this is almost like this kind of gothic portrayal, especially with that harpy thing. It looks terrifying. Mm-hmm. And I love the, like, I don't know if this is your protagonist or if just a character in the game, but I love the outfits in the middle there. Yeah. 
Um, very cool looking. Now, again, we don't have much on this, but this looks dope so far. I mean, yeah, already the design of this game is exciting. Mm -hmm. Now, with this next one, we don't have anything to show, so we're not going to be showing anything with this one. But we're going to just read again from Windows <laughs> Center. So we're going to go from... It's being called Pentiment. Now, this is from Obsidian. So this is a small team led by mm. Josh Sawyer. Uh, he is, uh, he helmed actually Fallout New Vegas. So, and, uh, mm, and Pillars leadership, of Eternity. Yeah. So if you two, if achievers, you love those two games, you're going to like this one. So it's being called Pentiment. Yeah. It looks like Pentiment. Yes. Yeah, Pentiment. Which refers to quote, an underlying image in a painting, especially one that has become visible when the top layer of paint has turned transparent with age End quote, according to the dictionary. So, uh, so very interesting way of winning a game this naming convention hits at the game's premise by which you act as an investigator in the 16th century europe uncovering the truth behind a grisly murder grub mentioned that uh and he's mentioned it because he was on xbox 2 podcast uh that we've referenced multiple times these last few mm. weeks uh takes cues from the likes of disco elysium and the branching narrative designs josh Sawyer is known for just like in new vegas You'll be able to investigate and make accusations against the characters in game, which could lead to cascading consequences if you're wrong. It'll be a dialogue heavy game with decisions to make and respond options to choose from, which will shape your experience as you unwrap the murder conspiracy before you. Uh, and he has been told that Penelope is being built by a small team of around 12 people wow. and is more of a narrative RPG adventure than something combat oriented. The art mm -hmm. asset above may represent some of the designs the game is gunning for. And Achievers, since he mentioned, I don't know. I, I'll show it really quick. Boom. That's what he looks like. Yeah. This doesn't really tell you anything. Well, but... by the art style, you could definitely tell it's not going to be like a first party crazy Witcher yeah. type game. It's going to be more like a third, you know, third party type indie game. Yeah, yeah. It's going to look very indie. And again, this is by Obsidian, so I'm very excited about this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it definitely, it, there, it's not going to be some realistic thing. Most likely, it looks like it's going to be some kind of like artsy mm -hmm. kind of. When um, you were, when you were, when it says able to investigate, make accusations, like a characters. Yeah. For some reason, it gives me a lot of L.A. Noir vibe. Yes, I knew that's what you're gonna say. Yes, and they, apparently it's yeah. coming for a 2022 launch, by the way. But interesting. Yeah, okay. What you were saying, yeah, yeah, definitely L.A. Noir for sure. Yeah, all over this game, um, especially when you're mentioning like, yeah, we're uh making it to where you can accuse someone, and if you're wrong, mm. that's consequences. And you, if you get something, you know, that could hurt your mm -hmm. thing later on. Blah blah blah. But yeah, mm. very cool. And those are two games that we've. Uh, not weave, but uh, have been heard from from the source, Jeff Grubb and Jess Corden. Very cool, Alex. Any of those? Any of those two? I mean, oh, mostly sure. I brought them up was we, Xbox is slowly getting to this point where we're actually going to start getting a regular release of games versus what we've kind of been used to of this kind of we get a game drought, then we get a game drought, then we get a game. So mm -hmm. we're getting close to this period where every couple yeah, months we're going to start getting video games. Time, they're giving us time to enjoy the games we got, okay? Uh, uh, that's what they're doing? Yeah. I mean, I mean, have you put down Halo multiplayer? <laughs> Anyways. Interesting. But yeah. I'm very excited for those two games. I'm mostly excited for the first one. the uh, Midnight. Midnight, yes. That looks very nice. Yes. The second one, honestly, is like, if it's a very specific I'll, game, I I'll might like it. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely try it. Yeah. My drive-by game. Uh, drive, yeah, they nailed it. Drive-by game. Number three. Yet another departure is played by where, and this time we see senior creative creative director Matt Goldman, who's been with the studio since 1998, which he left for, um, around the 2010s to work on Halo Wars, but then came back for Dragon Age 4 when they rebooted it from the games as a service model that we reported on um, roughly a year ago now, uh, which was originally going to be a game, but then they reworked it to being a single-player focused video game. Now, this is the statement that they gave out publicly. Alex, mm. I want you to see if you can pick up on some subtext in this statement, uh -oh. okay? Achievers, uh -oh. same thing to you. Let's really read this together and see That's together now. what we can read from this. All right. Hi, everyone. I hope you are well. I'm writing to inform you all that Matt Goldman is leaving Bioware. We have mutually agreed to part ways, and his last day is today. We understand that Matt's departure has an impact on you as well as the game's development. 
Rest assured, our commitment to a high-quality Dragon Age game has not wavered, and we will not ship a game that is not up to Bioware's standards. We, mm. including EA's executive team, have absolute confidence in our leadership here at the studio and the people working on this game to, care, to carry forward our vision. End quote. Alex. I mean, it seems to me, <laughs> Alex, he put something in the game that they did not agree with, and they're like, "Take that off, or you're out." <laughs> so clearly, and I'm not that's jumping. I'm, I'm not. Let's. I'm not going to say anything bad. No, uh, because that's not what we're here for. If something bad has happened, we'll hear about it. Yeah. I'm assuming specifically professional right now. Mm-hmm. Clearly, there was a major disagreement, mm-hmm. or something even worse than a disagreement happened. They don't even say he's been working here for 20 years and yeah. uh, we thank him for his service. It's, <laughs> it's it, definitely, like, it definitely pushes the button because when it says um, that um, as of today, effective immediately, he's no longer with us. Yeah. Which is uh, the thing about like not finishing the week, yeah. not finishing the pay period, not we're going to definitely... wait until someone comes in to fix his place. And it's weird because when it says effective immediately, like as of today, but then it says we mutually agreed to part ways. So like, how does that happen in a day? Uh, exactly. That means uh, they mutually agreed as in something big happened and they went, mm-hmm. you're okay. gone and we're not going to fire you because <clears throat> that makes you look real bad. Yeah. So you're going to say you left. Yeah. Yeah. So whoa, whoa, something whoa. happened. Now I'm going to say this too. Um, Almost everyone who came back for Dragon Age Four is now gone because they left because the, the 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 writer left. Um, I want to say a few months ago. I mean, Bioware no. has lost almost everyone that used to work on the original Mass Effects and the original Dragon mm. Ages. No, I don't want to accuse. No, no, no we, we definitely was don't. Every was everybody under this gentleman as they were leaving. Can you uh, oh, can you word that? Oh, it was, it was uh, Matt Colvin. Yeah, was he part of the Dragon Age Four, or was he in charge of the whole? Uh, was he in charge of Dragon Age Four development? Gotcha. He so he is. Everybody was leaving. I and, see what you're saying. I yeah. see what you're saying. No, no, no. So, the, so the last time well, like, that someone like I'm saying like was it his fault that everybody's leaving and no, because everybody that's left. A good point. Yeah. That's a good point because I mean it could be the project. It could, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe something with this gentleman happened that is causing some sort of rifts. I don't know. Yeah. The problems start somewhere with these games, right? Mass Effect, mm-hmm. same thing happened to them. I think Casey Hudson left again. So like, yeah, it just makes me. It, that, it makes Casey Hudson just, left, right? I think so. It just makes me feel like the way I see this going back to the the story of everybody leaving. It's like, hey. They they went up to him. They're like, "Hey, everybody that's been part of this has left for certain for certain reasons. Uh, you, you know, whatever happened, we're letting either we're letting you go or he's leaving. He's no longer part of it as well. I'm wondering if all of that's connected, or I'm wondering if they're gonna have to if they're gonna t- continue the development of the game, or if it's gonna completely restart. As yeah. as, as I e like Halo, what happened with Halo? They had to completely refresh." Never a good sign when a senior leaves mid-project ever. Period. Mm-hmm. I I I I find it hard pressed to think of a situation where someone left midway through and it was a good thing. Halo Five, the writer left halfway through. They threw out the whole game almost. Mm-hmm. Same thing happened with Anthem, I believe. I believe someone left. Uh, was it someone left? Some something happened and they restarted the game, like halfway through their development. And they like finish it in like a year or something. Like yeah. this keeps happening, and I'm nervous, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I'm super nervous. I love Dragon Age. I love Origins. I've loved Two. I loved Inquisition. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, love I love Mass all Effect of them. One through Three. I, yeah. The last two games we've gotten from Bioware is Andromeda and Anthem. Alex, the question I have for you, man, do they still have it? Or is this, or am I looking for a Bioware that it's, it doesn't exist anymore? They really, really have to look because I feel like I'm going to go back to it and I apologize, but with Ubisoft. Yeah. I feel like that studio needs a complete refresh. 
because all their games have been the same, the same, the same. I think mm. we need, not saying, you know, everybody's super talented. I can't do anything that they do, but we need something new. So I'm, maybe that's Those what they a need. refresh, revamping situation. Yes. Mm. We need something fresh. It'd be like, hey, we need, we, need, we need a whole new fresh studio with new ideas to bring mm. something. We don't want somebody to be, get dried out with this and then nobody wanting to come back. I think the only reason Bioware is still around is because EA literally can't close them. Um, and I mean that is EA would be just torn apart if they close Bioware. Um, I think something is going on with the studios, whether it is EA's conversation to Bioware or Bioware's well, conversations have, to EA. They still have Star Wars MMO up, so they can't really close it because that's part of what, Bioware's part of that. Yeah, yeah, my, my, yeah, yeah. I'm, what I'm saying though is like, even even if we, that's a good point. They they do have a working title right now, and that probably makes them a hell shit ton of money. So they probably don't really care. But <laughs> these last two releases, I mean, they're they're like fighting from the back foot, yeah. for lack of a better like metaphor, right? Something I mean, not working. <laughs> yeah. So I that's thank you. That's kind of what I wanted. Like what I want to know what is what is the piece. Right, because Casey came back and then left again after like a couple months with Mark. Um, uh, what was his name? Mark uh, Dara. Yeah, Mark, Mark Dara. Uh, Mark Dara. Mark Dara. Yep. Left with him again. They all came. Back. It's like we've seen people come back to Bioware, probably assuming things have changed or they have told them things have changed, and they go to do a thing and they go, oh, "Well, you can't do that," and they just leave again. So. And I have to assume it's EA, right? You have to assume something in that conversation is wrong. Maybe it is well, Bioware just literally imploding on itself. Well, that this they is they can't uh, agree. But I found an article an article about this okay. on uh, Clutch Points, and at, towards the very end, it just says uh, one of one of the sentences. It says uh, after Mark Dara and Casey Hudson leaving, it says many leave Bioware dissatisfied with what the studio has become. Wow. What is, I mean, like, what do you, how, how become what? Like, are they, like, is it a, is it not a good environment? Are they not liking the ideas? Like, what is it about the studio that is not, uh, is it that, that is, that is fa- dissatisfactory? Yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to know. And we may, we might not ever know unless this place straight up just gets closed down or someone mm-hmm. goes off the record and we get an op ed about, or, who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, who knows? But I, uh, <laughs> I'm really nervous. I, I, I first off, I was nervous when they remade Dragon Age Four, even though I don't want a game as a service Dragon Age because that's just not what the game is, and yeah. all, and clearly Bioware does. I not just don't know what to I, do it's with crazy that. because that yeah, I don't think they know what to do with this Dragon Age. I honestly, Alex, I think I agree. I, I think they don't. Well, I don't think they know what they should do either. Because clearly, EA is going just, to them and goes, "You got to figure out a way of us making a lot of money." I mean, it's like so many things. Like it says, EA has allegedly wanted to make Dragon Age Four a multiplayer game. Yeah, and now there was rumors that Dragon Age will be a live service game. They did. Yeah, they they yeah. were they were gonna do that, but apparently, Jedi Fallen or- Order was what changed a bunch of executives minds because they could they saw that they could make a, still a good bit of money off a single player like game pick something and just like put your like your full attention to it don't because i feel like these games are trying to or it's like oh we're gonna put a little bit of this in here a little bit of that in there it's what's making the game not yeah well. yeah yeah let's let's put some cosmetics in there and let's make you buy I think, it honestly, let's i think that's what happened with this Anthem. the game i it, it felt like it was a little bit of everything everywhere, and it was not good. Oh yeah, no, it was a bunch of it was five video games put together, mm-hmm. and none of them was, were good. Yeah, it was a story game, terrible. Uh, life service, terrible. Uh, I mean, didn't yeah. even work. It's, yeah, multiplayer game. Honestly, I, mean, like, I did chuckle a little bit. Not to cut you off, I did chuckle a okay. little bit at this line, as <laughs> uh, we include. Uh, I don't know where is it. Uh, we understand that March Price has an impact as well, but rest assured our commitment to a high quality Dragon Age game is not wavered. We will not ship a game that is not up to Bioware standards. From this point on, I'm assuming, because you did yeah. before, twice, yeah. with Andromeda yeah, talking, and yeah, Anthem. From, from now on? So, like, so from this point on, right, is is like when we're not going to ship games that are up to... So that's that, that made me chuckle a tiny bit when I was reading the statement, like, 
you mean from here now, right? Because you can't say that about the last two. I mean, hell, you could barely say that about Inquisition with some of the bugs they have, but that's mm-hmm. the point. Uh, anyway. I love getting all worked up. Right? Fun. Nah, nah, I can never go to sleep at night. Alex, speaking of Bioware and Mass Effect. Uh, uh-oh. Amazon loves money, too, shockingly. And they're in the finalizations of getting an Amazon X, I guess you could say Bioware, EA, whatever deal going on Ooh. to make a Mass Effect TV show. Now, this has not been oh, signed this. in the lettering or anything like that, apparently yet, but they are in the final throes of making the deal. Now, Alex, let me take you on a journey. Mass Effect has Ooh. had a wild ride. If anyone remembers this, because I do. Back in around 2010, they announced literally nothing else but a guy outside of E3. I remember this clearly in my mind. It was just a guy outside of E3 talking into a mic on G4. Mm-hmm. And the guy out there said, there's going to be a Mass Effect movie made. We literally don't have anything else to say. We don't have a director. We don't have a writer. We don't have any name. Literally names everything. Like We don't have anything else, but we could say the movie's being made. And even Alex as a child back then, I went... Then why are you announcing that you have a movie being made? So that made me go on a exposition trying to figure out where this made up movie came from. Now mm-hmm. we could do the yeah, quick thing just to be the attention. Yeah. So quickly, Alex, I will run you through you the last time they did this. I do not think this will happen again, by the way, but I'm just saying. Uh, so this uh, the last that? time they did this was uh, officially announced May 24th, 2010. Legendary Pictures and Warner Brothers were to co-produce and co-finance the film. Um, and uh, yeah, th- there was a couple producers and uh, Legendary Projections. Uh, le- sorry, Legendary Pictures. Apparently, like when they split up from Warner Brothers, messed up the Mass Effect movie a lot or whatever, and then eventually just got canceled. So that was a bunch of nonsense that happened back then. But now, apparently, we're going to get a TV show from Amazon, which I actually do believe would happen if Amazon signs the dollar letter. Yeah. Because Amazon, they're going to make a TV show about anything at this point. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> that, this was what I wanted to bring to you, Alex. We have nothing else to say, but we have Mass Effect's going to get a TV show. Um, <clears throat> I definitely don't think it's about Shepard. Cool. Yeah, that's a that's the thing too. So, do you? Yeah, you want to talk about what it might be? I would. I I would assume. Let's if it is real and they're making a show and whatever, I would assume it's uh early Mass Effect shit. Like like the like not towards the beginning. First contact like, wars. Maybe. That didn't it's last very long, so I imagine you can't make a sh- show about that. And that was when they first contact with Turians, and there was like a misunderstanding, I would assume, like, and they the, shot at them. I assume they could start with that, and if it goes well, they can continue. Oh, so some sort of anthology series, like um, Maybe. like like the first seasons, like about the first car- first contact wars or something. Right. So Amazon is an interesting beast. Do <clears throat> they have a so they did Invincible, which yes. good, very good show. I actually love, but they went off the source material. Do we have any? I mean, would they have the Lord of the Rings show? That's not really the same thing because so they've already the made a Lord of the Rings movie, like about the books. So, so like, the I was, I was just trying to think, like, what is their history with adaptions? And I feel like hard. they're gonna make a Ca- Commander Shepard show. It's hard to say when we don't know if it's a live action or animation, like Invincible. That's a good point. I don't think they've said that. I think because... they just said it's an adaption. <clears throat> yeah, because if it's an adaptation, I mean that, that could be, be anything. That could be anything. I mean, we've yeah. had an anim- ad- we've had an animation Mass Effect movie, you know, and that that was pretty cool. Um, but it depends because you could do a lot more with animation because you are budgeting. You know, you don't have to worry about so much CGI and things like that. But mm, I don't know. Yeah, just very quick achievers. Yeah, there's literally all they said was, and we're nearing the final in uh, deals of a Mass Effect. So we we yeah. we literally have no idea. Yeah, I will say, I don't really care. I don't know if you do, Alex, but I I don't I don't really I care. I care. I'll care when I see a trailer for it and I, I see a release date. You see a date. Okay. I yeah. I don't care. Just I, I like I. This is a thing I'll watch. 
mm-hmm. but if if you go to me right now and it's like if you hit this button like mass effect will get a tv show and if you hit this button like i don't know you'll get a cookie or something i'm hitting the cookie thing i just mm-hmm. i don't want to i don't care i don't it's like, really it's, yeah it's with a lot my, of things i have my shepherd right exactly yeah, like if, for example, like with with um, there's a uh, the the aliens sh- TV show coming out on Hulu. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yes, there is an aliens live action TV show coming out on Hulu. It's cool. It's supposed to be coming out twenty twenty three. I think it's it said. I don't. I, I don't remember. Um, don't know how I'm gonna feel about it. Okay. Because it says it's it has the mix of horror from Alien and the action from Aliens, which is I'm like, mm, okay. oh how. But it's F. It's FX. So, and uh, mm. how much are you willing to show? Ooh, FX. Okay. And yeah, so that's my thing. I don't really care um to the point to where okay, I start seeing more development and knowing what's about because apparently it has nothing to do with, of course, with uh, with Ripley. Ripley. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I I I love my alien aliens. I'm gonna stick to that. Until I see the show, a trailer for it, I don't really care for it right now gotcha just because i haven't seen anything about yeah, it Yeah, you need some you need some before yeah. you're like oh a mass work show yeah yeah again i don't i don't care i don't care mm-hmm. honestly like i'll see what i believe <laughs> honestly like why did it take I'll him so long it. yeah <laughs> yeah like, i remember that movie being made and that's what when i first saw this i was like whatever happened to the fucking movie they were trying to make and honestly i i never really cared to look into it so when i looked into it i was like oh mm-hmm. okay it, oh it looked like, like literally li- legal nonsense happened, and it just mm, couldn't be made. It's but. like the it's like the sequel to Dante's Inferno we were supposed to get, and never happened. Oh, yeah, that's true. I think that yeah. was yeah. I think I got yeah. We're supposed to get a sequel to that. I think they closed the studio, happened. didn't they? Well, no. not even the game. The, not even the game. The no. animation movie. That's right. Yeah, we were yeah, supposed yeah. to get a movie, an animation movie, uh, ba- uh, and we just never got it. Alex, hmm. Harmonix is joining Epic Games. Mm-hmm. This is a strange one, but when you think about it, it's not as strange as you think. When I think of Harmonix, I think of Guitar Hero. <laughs> it's weird. You do? Yeah, you, do. you should. Yeah. You should, Alex. Harmonix is joining the Epic Games studio to work on Fortnite in various ways, assumably to assist on their various concerts in-game. And this is just completely mm-hmm. conjecture on my point, but possibly maybe adding some other gameplay components to these kind of uh, concerts that they're doing. But again, this is all conjecture. Uh, they promised on their websites in this announcement to not mess with Fuser, which is their current game that they released, or not to mess with Rock Band and how their uh, track lists and upcoming uh, releases are not going to be touched. Basically, it was a huge, we won't mess with the thing you like uh, sentence. Why, Q&A why is Rock Band even mentioned? It's been years. They still release tracks for the real release. Yeah. Holy I shit. didn't know either, Alex. <laughs> I didn't know either. They still, they are still. There is a track list for the, for the coming year. So they're gonna finish out this year, and there's another year where they're gonna release more. I wonder why Rock Band and not Guitar Hero. Maybe it gets, Rock Band is more of a has more of a. You would th- I would think Guitar Hero would be a lot, but hmm. I no. don't know if Activision think- abandoned like what they were doing with Guitar Hero because I, I, I know they, they have Guitar Hero live and they had that yeah, live that good. service thing going, but I don't know if that's still happening. I think people play more Rock Band because it stayed the traditional yeah. insta- like unlike Guitar Hero live. So yeah, maybe that's why they abandoned yeah. it. But um, that's Harmonix crazy. founded May tenth, nineteen ninety five, but did not reach household acclaim until their release of the original Guitar Hero in two thousand five. Then followed by Rock Band in 2007, after the split by the purchase by of Red, Red Octane. Octane by Activision and then MTV Games buying Harmonix. They continue to release track to this very day when they attempted to bring back the series in 2015 with Rock Band 4. I had to keep it short and sweet, Achievers. There's a lot of history that you can go in with that, especially oh with the drama between the Guitar Hero and Rock Band thing, with the mm-hmm. purchase of Red Octane and all that, but I didn't want to bore you all with a bunch of, mm-hmm. bunch of history. That's for another time, but uh, Alex, this is another studio being bought by one of the big guys. You got anything to to add? It's just crazy because is it only being used for upcoming studios or excuse me, upcoming? upcoming for, um, yeah. So when you read events. when you read the announcement, it is literally spelled out to aid with Fortnite. And various concert events, kind of, basically, in layman's terms. That's so weird. they're mo- they're going the way of um, 
uh, Vicarious Visions, where like they're going in to make Call of Duty maps and modes and shit. They're mm-hmm. going, they're basically being eaten to pr- help with Fortnite. Hmm. Interesting. I don't. I am sad to see just another person gone in the because the there's just too many studios being bought. Honestly, it's getting uncomfortable. Frankly, <laughs> just the amount of studios being purchased is a little insane. Two, uh, ignoring that fact, um, it is a cool thing to see that they're trying to make concerts a bigger thing because I just think it's this cool thing to have a Fortnite concert being a thing yeah. to experience. Like someone can go to a like concert that. inside of a video game. I do like that. And if Harmonix is there to support, they're going to add some cool feature to it. They're going to like, I mean, just, I mean, they could be so much. I, my feeble brain is just picturing like some r- rock band thing inside of Fortnite and you're like doing stuff. But like, I'm, I'm sure they have way cooler ideas than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that I don't have too much to add other than it is sad <laughs> to see yet another thing being eaten by a billion dollar company. That being said, ignoring that fact, it's pretty cool to see it. Can, sorry, it will be cool to see if this changes up the concerts at all. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this one. Yeah, I this is definitely <clears throat> kind of a question mark for me too, where I'm like, because I feel like and, it, I feel like it has to be more than just helping out with with that. But I maybe it will. But again, you have to think about it too. Like Activision did this exact thing multiple times with um, Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty. They ate Raven. They ate Vicarious Visions. Now, then I don't want to talk about it. I get sad. <laughs> Xbox Cloud Gaming has launched on Xbox Series S, X, and Xbox One consoles. This is a quick one, Achievers. Um, if you are on your Xbox on either of those consoles and you have an active Game Pass Ultimate subscription, you may have noticed you are able to now stream games instead of downloading them directly, and you're able to play them. You don't have to download them. I honestly have not been able to try the feature out. I did want to, but I have had a very busy week in work, so I, um, yep. I just have not been able to try it. But this is in a beta form on a bunch of consoles in 25 regions. Um, of course, the Americas being one of them. And uh, let us know what you think. I am excited to see this. Yeah, I want to see how well it would do. Yeah, I do too. I, achievers, we'll, we'll try to do this for the next week. Me and Alex will both try it out just to be able to see, like, yeah, with my internet with X, it did this, you know, it did it this is well. weird that it's launched on the systems that you're wanting to play the games for, if I said that correctly. Like, like you're wanting to play Xbox games on the go, but to do the X Cloud, it's on the Xbox. So, I, I see like, what I'm, you're saying. So, it's yeah, all it's the con- weird yeah, it's, so- it's, it's weird that it's not on mobile first. Yeah, well, it, I mean, it is. You have cloud gaming on your I mobile guess. phone. I, now, it's not readily available yet, I would that's say. That's what I'm saying. The, the official launch, what they just yeah. did with the thing, it's, I'm surprised that that wasn't the first one to yeah, go Yeah, the out. way they pitched this, honestly, is like, don't um, wait to download. Play now. That, that, yeah. It seemed like the way. And also, you have to be a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, mm-hmm. which I, I thought you would just have to be a Game Pass person to be able to do this. But no, you have to be an Ultimate. So you have to have both Gold and Game Pass to be able to even do this. Mm-hmm. very interesting but again not too much to to say for for me and I, and i'm pretty sure it's not every game it's probably like how the x cloud used to be when it yeah. was in, it's just like a certain amount a handful yeah. i think it was like i think it was like a little a couple weeks ago i tried i saw it popped up on my xbox saying that i can just stream my game now and i tried to do that with forza and it would it, it didn't even load and i was like okay so still having issues. Also, Achievers, um, for Xbox One users, cloud gaming also allows you to play some next-gen games on the Xbox One console you already own. Now, we already did cover this. Um, but that means you can play re- Recompile, Medium, and Rift Breaker on your Xbox One, which is pretty cool because you wouldn't have a way of playing it regardless. Mm, that's true. Without that. So that is a cool thing. Yeah. It does, and I have to try this, but the way they say it, it seems like if it's on Game Pass, you can... You can cloud game it, which I find that hard to believe. Another cool say, like I tried it and it wasn't working the other week. But yeah, yeah. And um, another cool thing they brought up is if if a friend invites you to a game, you, you won't have to download. You you just 
P- pull start up the game unit. and it's gonna play play with the cool is it? which that that idea i'm like all right that's kind of cool yeah i don't see myself honestly using this because i'm just no. gonna download the game but yeah. you know cool, I have, cool feature. I have good enough internet that i don't have i don't have to worry about that same here so anyway mm. kojima has finally done it achievers he's added a branch to his studio to work on film and tv He's been long waited for Kojima to finally make his way into the film mode, and here we are. He has a f- official division inside his own studio, led by PlayStation veteran Riley Russell, which has been a PlayStation VP of Business um, Affair, among a bunch of other titles. Nothing else to say about this other than that he has made his own branch inside of his uh, company. Very cool. Very interesting to see what will happen. He's clearly wanted to make movies. I mean... I follow him on Instagram, Alex. He, that's his feed, is movies. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. He's going to make, instead of the Silent Hill game, he's going <laughs> to make a TV show <laughs> with Norman Reedus. Yeah, he's be be like, awesome. you wanted the game? No, thanks. You're going to get the, mo- the You're show. You're going to get the movie. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. So, honestly, what's most interesting is Kojima doesn't own any of his IP. So, uh, he's. it's just all going to be new stuff Where if he does make a... Stuff? A film and TV show like he doesn't own anything. He doesn't own Metal Gear. He doesn't own. Uh, I don't even, he, he doesn't own Death Stranding. I don't believe so. Like, I mean, he it would all be original stuff, which pretty cool. I don't. Alex, do you have anything you want to? I mean, that? I'm interested because I I love his mind. It's so weird. No, I love it too. I mean, I love that Kojima's in the industry because it's. He brings something, n- literally, Alex, no one else can bring. Like, like I went back and watched the P- PT gameplay again. Yeah, I did too. And and it was just the ideas in that game. Like, literally, you're just walking by and you see the light and you just see something flickering behind in the shadow. And you're yeah. like, oh, my God, it's the ghost. But if you turn around, there's nothing like the little details of little things. Like, he's so, like... Uh, like specific with certain details and I love it fun fact I know you know this Alex but for achievers if you know what PT is someone actually was a uh, broke into the game and detached the camera from the locked position behind the players or in front of the players head in quote unquote and if you if you move the camera and turn around where the player is the she's wife sitting, is always sitting, behind girl, you always there yeah she's always there going like this yeah doing her weird yeah. wife shape yeah she's thing always she there yeah she's just freaking she just walks with you the whole time terrifying oh yeah terrifying terrifying yeah no, you would never know that no yeah it, unless it's you terrifying. did that and now you know she's always behind you. that's why that's why every time i watch pt i'm like i know she's there at all times and it you just you have you to know. like not to think about it like you have to it, reminds, not think about it. it reminds me because there's a movie i forget it's called like shutter or flutter but it's this guy is a photographer and he's like feeling weight on his shoulder at all times, but he can't see anything. But he finally takes a picture in the mirror and he starts doing shit. And you, he could see like a, dem- like some demonic, like, or looking girl, like a grudge looking girl on his shoulders the whole time. Oh, that's creepy. And, but he can't see anything. Nobody can see anything. He's trying to figure out what's wrong with this house. He feels something on his shoulder. Dude. Awesome movie. I love that movie. Jesus. It's weird. Like people have crazy minds, dude. Who? I can't wait. Alex, he needs it's to make horror. I love horror movies. Alex, it's over. Mm, no. It's finally over. Is it? What's over? Tell me. We'll never have to ask this question. No one's going to answer this question. No one's going to be asked. We'll, we'll have never have to talk about this ever again. Elder Scrolls Six is an Xbox and PC exclusive. Oh, did everyone feel that that um, weight? You think it's permanent? That weight? Yes. The, no. Okay. Stop. No. You're not. No, you're bringing it back. Stop it. <laughs> Do you think it's a timed exclusive? <laughs> Bro, I'm actually, I'm actually so, glad that they've said that it is, so people can shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad of either way. Like, even if it wasn't, I'm like, thank God, we can just stop talking about this. Now, Alex, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we promised the steak dinner. I don't know, but I think I owe you one because I'm pretty sure we made a bet about this. Uh, yeah, I and I think it. I said it would not mm-hmm. be exclusive. I said so it. I think I, I owe you it. a steak dinner now. <laughs> Click link below the exact scene. No, I'm just joking. I don't know where to find <laughs> We're not doing that. I'm not finding that. I have no <laughs> idea what episode we did that in. But, oh, I have no idea. But yeah, uh, yeah, I I didn't think it would because they re-released Skyrim on PS uh, four and five. So like, 
I was like, well, like they did that. So are they actually going to release it? And, and so, and technically Phil did say we will release games that have a history on the, on their, like he made that weird ass statement. I was like, so are you saying you're going to release it on just say it, please. But anyways, I think he, he, cause he's not a fan of, of, he's not a fan of, uh, what's it called? Exclusiveness. But I think he knows that it needs it. I think he's, they say he's like, okay. Well, he knows the most advantageous thing is making exclusive to game. No, for sure. But uh, you know, like, you like, I feel like it's it needs it for the like like oh my god Xbox has Elder Scrolls that's nuts it's like you know it's like um, imagine before we even knew God of War was a uh, PlayStation exclusive they're saying that it's only PlayStation so it's just like I don't know no I see what you're saying um this is a direct quote from the man himself quote it's not about punishing any other platform mm. like i fundamentally believe all of the platforms can continue to grow but in order to be on xbox i want us to be able to bring the full complete package of what we have and that would be true when i think about Elder scrolls 6 that would be true when i think about any of our franchises end quote via phil of course phil spencer and you know what i can see to that the next big fallout whenever they do decide to do that xbox exclusive yep and if you remember they've branched out the studio they haven't announced it yet but but i'm pretty confident it's true that they're making a studio that's going to specialize in fallout to make them quicker so i feel like fallout's exclusive now too because they're not going to do one and not the other so (laughs) oh no they have to yeah because yeah ever since when bethesda was like oh we're making uh the new game what was it uh starfield Thank you, Starfield. They're like, that's exclusive. I was like, they're going to do it. They have to. They have to make their big ti- one of their big titles exclusive. I thought the strategy was release it on Game Pass, say it's only $10 here, or you can pay $70 on that other now, platform. I thought that was the, the now, way they would do it. It probably will be on Game Pass. No, it will be for sure. Yeah, they, it's it, Xbox, it will be. It's so it's, it will be no, yeah. no, but what I was saying was, I thought they would release it on PlayStation, but oh, the God. but the driver would be, yeah, no, you can go go buy it on PlayStation, bucks. but for ten bucks you can have it here, and Halo Infinite, and whatever the fuck where else they would have at that time. You know, I thought that was gonna be the it. overall thing where it's like, yeah, go 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 make us money, I mean, and either way we get the cut. We don't care. Honestly, I think that it was it was a smart move, just like what they no, did. No, I think it is. I think ultimately with, this is the better move. Honestly, I think it's gonna get more people on Xbox. As it for as I said again earlier, when God of War was exclusive to PlayStation, people were buying PlayStations just for God of War. I think you could I confidently like, say millions of people like will buy a Xbox, an Xbox when just this for is Scrolls. coming out. Yeah. Easily millions. Like yeah. I mean, like even if it's just a Series S or something, like yeah, I feel like no the, Series S, Series X the, doesn't matter. I can easily see bundled, you know, a series of Elder Scrolls Six bundle. You know, you get you get three months of Game Pass Ultimate, and you can play Elder Scrolls Six. Easy. <sighs> Time will tell. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Alex, that is our news for the week. Let's move on to date updates. A couple of date updates, a couple of quick ones. Um, one we're just gonna I'm just gonna make fun of. Oh god. So I can't wait for that. I'm actually gonna save that for last now. Um, All right, now I gotta so, erase what I was doing. <laughs> so, no, this is still date update. Okay. Oh, I see what you're doing. Uh no, keep it, keep it. I, I won't fuck with it then. To I don't want to mess with your thing. Sifu is now launching on PS4, PS5, February 8th. We're gonna crack on Narcos for a second, Alex, and we're just gonna make fun of something. Dragon Ball The Breakers were announced over the break. This is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC on 2022. Or, oh, sorry, around 2022. Another Dragon Ball Z game? Yeah, no, Alex. Doesn't that suck? Another Dragon Ball game? But it is not what you think. It is what you've always wanted to play. As, what the fuck does that mean? As... As myself and not Goku? As people, Alex, in the world. Haven't you always wanted to play that? As just the people with no powers? An asymmetrical. 
<laughs> when I yeah. saw this trailer, I was in disbelief. I was like, what? I haven't watched. I haven't seen the trailers yet. What? It's literally showing like you as people running away from like cell, and like you're hiding in like Frieza's ship, uh-huh. like from cell, and cell's like looking for you and stuff. And if he catches you, he transforms into like cell's second form. So it's like he- Alien Isolation, but Dragon Ball Z version. Well, it's like Dead by Daylight. Oh, that is a good point. Good yeah, point. It's good literally point. Dead by Daylight, but in Dragon Ball Z, and I can't believe it's real. Oh God! Why is why did Cell look so terrifying when he saw you through the window? Yeah, they definitely ah. ham, they ham it up. They ham it up. But oh wow! Is, can I be Oolong? Yeah, you can. You can be Oolong. You can be the pig. That's right, everyone. The pig in Dragon Ball Z. The guy you've always been like. I wonder what his thing is. Yeah, he's just running around. He can turn into props. Seven survivors. Yeah, it's Dead by Daylight, but why? Seven Daylight why? from Dragon Ball Z. What we always wanted. Ah, uh, it's like it's like the it's like every game they make. They're like, okay, this one's gonna be our fucking banger. <laughs> oh, it, it wasn't. Let's try the next one. Well, like, the next one Fighters, scratch, Z, Fighters was the banger. What happened with that? They said that wasn't a banger. It was a banger. They've released like seven, or like twelve characters for that game. Why not either make a sequel to that? Or make a game with that art style that everyone likes more than any other game you've ever made. And why was it? Why isn't this just called Run from Cell the game? <laughs> like uh, the, you'll literally, be able to run from Freeze. Literally, too. literally, it says that the uh, the trailer is heavy focus on Cell, even evolves in, in into his feet, like perfect Cell. I'm but sure the PR also features Frieza, Frieza, Frieza Majin Buu. Maybe you be Vegeta. You, could, you might be be Vegeta and running around blowing people up. I just can't believe it's a game coming out. I just can't. And now, now, to be fair, would I have made fun of Dead by Daylight if they announced it? Maybe. But again, Dead by Daylight had like looked interesting, where like you had to like do mini games and stuff. Yeah, this, this like even Friday looks, the Thirteenth when they poor. showed it to me looked more enticing than this. Oh yeah, definitely. No, no, no. Friday the Thirteenth looked really cool because a like, character was Jason running around. Maybe a yeah. character is Cell that is running around, but still, like it doesn't. It does <laughs> doesn't look fun. None of that looks fun. Dead by like, Daylight I, looks fun because you like you're like oh my god he's almost there that looks like, like oh my I god he can fly stuff? and look at me like, exactly I, like yeah. like with at least Friday the Thirteenth I can just kind of set traps to slow him down what am I gonna what am I gonna do with the cell I'm gonna look at him and run or am I gonna be oolong and turn into a plant as it did in the trailer this seems DOA dead on and it comes out next year dead on arrival achievers Saints Row has officially been delayed to August 22nd. Officially delayed, Alex. August. It is getting out of that window of January to March. It is like, nope, no thank you. We would okay. like to sell our video game. Honestly, I don't mind. I don't either. They, they're they smart. They're like, yeah. like no, no, know your strengths. Also, know your weaknesses. You can't go up against I, those games. I haven't seen much of the game from what we saw, and I haven't been enticed. I haven't been like super excited about it, and it's kind of upsetting because I love Saints Row. To be honest, everything I've seen about it has not made me excited about the game, which yeah, I like, hate saying. I, exactly. I, I wanted to be excited about the game, but everything I've seen, I go... Honestly, it doesn't oh feel God, Saints Row. Good. That doesn't look good at all. It doesn't feel Saints Row to me. Maybe, hopefully, maybe they'll change that a little bit, but it maybe. just... When I look at it, I'm like, oh, it's just another GTA-type game as what they're doing like with Souls, Souls-type game, GTA-type game. Like It doesn't feel like a Saints Row game. I don't know. Yeah, it does look more GTA ripoffy than even Saints Row two and three did. Even though if it almost tried to do something a little different with those, I don't know. It's not important. Yeah, uh, Alex Multiverses was revealed. The game that was leaked a couple weeks ago that we covered that was actually revealed. <laughs> Excuse me, revealed coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox Series S and X, and PC 2022. It's gonna have cross platform support. Um, this game looks weird. So game literally it looked like that they had made it. And then the Cartoon Network one came on, they're like, fuck, we can't show this now. They they brought theirs out first. Yeah. Let's wait, wait a couple weeks. Yeah, wait a couple weeks. <sighs> so yeah, Bugs Bunny, Harley Quinn, <clears throat> Batman, Jake um from Adventure Time. Actually, you know what, Achievers? I'm gonna get you a full list because this is just Warner Bros. 
Arya Stark. What? Versus characters. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's not fake. That's real. What? Th th that's actually a person. Why? Do you not love that? I mean... Starting from the top. Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. Batman from... Well... Something. Bugs Bunny, <laughs> Finn from Adventure Time, Garnett from Steven Universe, Harley Quinn, Jake from Adventure Time, Rain Dog, which is a, an actual character in Multiverses, a, a original character, Shaggy from Scooby Doo, Steven from Steven the Universe, or sorry, Steven Universe, Superman from, you know, Tom and Jerry from, well, you know, Wonder Woman from, well, you know. It's a free to play game, live service. Uh, that means that they're going to make you pay for the people that are going to add the game. Um, and let's remember that uh, there are other leaks. Gandalf is going to be in the game. <laughs> and, and Rick Sanchez is also going to be in the game. Uh, there's also rumors that people from the Harry Potter franchise will also be included. So there feasibly can be a match between Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, Superman, Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, and Jake from Adventure Time, all in a single fight. This... Be right back for a second. Okay, yeah, no, go ahead, I'll vamp. The Achievers. I mean, this looks like a special type of insanity, right? Superman, Shaggy... And, and, and what brings the question is, why is Smash Brothers the one video game that I don't question anything? I don't question Cloud fighting Star Fox. It's just normal to me. Like, when I see Smash Brothers, that is a normal fight. I don't know why. Maybe Nintendo has unlocked some sort of special thing with their Smash Brothers, or maybe it's just been such a long time since they've had the game out that it's not weird that Fire Emblem characters are just beating the shit out of Mario. But... Seeing hmm. Superman fight Gandalf to me just is not clicking. I don't know why, and I don't like it. I don't think it was weird at the time when Smash came out because all the characters that came out originally were, you know, they were Nintendo. And now, you know, they've I branched out. Something. And and they and were I video think, games, right? So, like, yeah. it wasn't like... They were just, they were space, specifically Nintendo. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, oh, you had you Mr. Game & Watch, you had uh, Pokemon, you had all those, all those, you know, oh, Nintendo, Nintendo. And then they branched out, and you're like, oh, you know, they've added more people, and we've already liked this game. This game is literally starting out random as shit. Like, it's called Multiverse. I get it. You're trying to get everywhere, but literally, get, why wouldn't it start... With one thing, maybe, maybe W, not even WB. I don't even know. Well, this is all uh, WB technically, but I see what you're saying. It is, but, but like, for, but you know, you don't see that. Like when you see example, WB, you don't think Arya Stark. You no, know, for example, like, like scratch all these people. Okay, and keep, and let's go with Boomerang. You got Scoob, you got Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Then you could put like the Jetsons, the Flintstones. Then I can see a consistency. Mm. Oh, it's all the boomerang people. We got Flintstones, we got Jetsons, we got all the all uh, Scooby Doo. We have all these people from one specific line. And I'm like, okay, then maybe if they start adding stuff, it'll make more sense. But straight out the back, like really, Arya Stark from HBO with Jake the dog. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is kind of wild that this is going to be a real thing we get to watch. And I kind of can't wait. You know what I mean? Like, in a very like, weird it's like way. It's trying. <coughs> Which is weird, though, Excuse really me. quickly. It's trying to be Fortnite, but, like, in a smash way. Well, first off, uh, let's rip apart this art style. What is up with this art style? It's It looks it does look like Fortnite, right? It literally looks the like a free-to-play. It looks like it, was, it is a free-to-play game. It is free-to-play. It but... looks like a game that literally, I'm going to type in right now. CartoonNetwork.com. You know the little games they used to play when you were that a kid when you were waiting does, at a does, library? It does look like that. That's literally the art like style. That. It does look like that. You're right. That 100 Alex, you nailed this art style. That is exact. It looks like a web browser fighting game. Yeah, so. Which, mind you, I used to love those fucking no, no, games. No, I used to, hey, I'm right there with you. Now, imaginary Friends game? Yeah, oh, I love it. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I love those but games. Now, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, this at least pick weird. a theme. 
pick a theme first, then branch out. Because you, if you pick a theme, then people with that that love that theme are gonna jump in, and then you can add. When you have everything all over the place, people are gonna shit on this. <laughs> as we're doing. Also, <laughs> what's up with Superman Sea Vision being blue in the screenshot? What's up what with that? The fuck are you talking about? Is there There's a screenshot I'm looking at right now. Um, I'm on Screen Rant, and they got a picture from the trailer, and his he oh, vision's no. blue. What's up with What's up with that? It's just a, it's a thing. I, I don't mind why? it. You I'm just what? saying, you know like, why? and it's because, and, uh, and it, the CW shows the the heat vision's blue. Right, but that's I feel like an okay version of blue where that looks hot. This looks like ice. You know what I mean? Like there's a there's a blue flame. Color. Maybe they don't want to show red because red is very. Uh, I might picture Shaggy's burning corpse if he gets hit with heat vision. Red, red, red is very uh, what's, the, what's the word? Very uh, violent. Yeah, yeah. Very violent. So they, you know, it's a kid. It's so when he, kid when he shoots heat vision at Steve in the universe, a a small child, I might think of his burning corpse being penetrated with a large heat vision. Good point. I mean, dude. Good point. This game, Alex. I I don't understand. Believe it or not, we're ending the show on that note. Why do you do this to me? And Cheevers, thank you so much you for joining us. And I gotta go play GTA San Andreas. And and G- Cheevers, thank you so much. Alex, we have... First off, we have a busy schedule, not only for the show, but for our video game portfolios to finish out uh, for the coming weeks. Uh, we have so many videos for you playing. Oh, so we're, we're gonna God. make up for missing over the break with the amount of shows that we're gonna be giving you guys over the week. So I would say over the next two weeks. So just be prepared for that. This was a really fun show back. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining me, Alex. Now, I ask you one question at mm-hmm. the end of the show, just like I do at the beginning of the show, and it's almost the same question. Alex, what do you have queued up now? Of course, this could be a game, a video game, some sort of comic book or book, TV show, movie, anything. What do you have queued up, Achievers? Remember, I ask you that same question every single week. What do you have queued up for the weekend? My boy Dexter. I got to go watch the newest of episode. Of course. Of course. Uh, I got to go play some GTA. Okay. Hopefully, mm-hmm. I can finish it this week. Hopefully, Ho- hopefully. hopefully, I don't We're know. I, like I said, literally, I'm so tempted to just look up a mission list and to see how far I am. I just be like, where the fuck am I? <laughs> and but boys, my souls, boys, I'm I, 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 I restarted. I am back to Dark Souls remastered. He's back again. I was on PlayStation. Can't quit. Uh, platinum, can't quit. Uh, platinum, I think I missed a, co- a couple of achievements. I almost platinumed it. Almost. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on Xbox. I, I <clears throat> am going to be slowly picking through Far Cry. That's the game, honestly, Alex. I don't know if you do game. I don't think you play games this way. I think it's. I think I do. But I, sometimes I, I listen to a podcast or a show. Mm-hmm. This is going to be the podcast show game. I think mm-hmm. when I got like a a fire. I don't know podcast I want to listen to. Maybe. I got a little bit. I got an idea. Like I've been wanting to spit out. You know, like achievers. If there's a game you oh. want us to spoil a cast on, something that we've missed, you'd be like, "Hey, this was this this got slid slid under your rug. Try this out mm. and and let me know what you guys think and see if it if it gets enough. Maybe we'll do it. We do technically still have to do the Tales of Horizon one, but I did not mm-hmm. see many people say they were interested in listening to that. But yeah. I almost want to do it just so we could talk about how weird it was yeah like that like we like you know should we do tales of arise yeah should know. we I, I think we i don't know maybe we should who knows we'll put up a poll yeah we'll do a poll anyways yes far cry i gotta finish the my hero season i'm on so good that show is i need to go back to it it's, it's just busy so good um Really, that's it. It's cleaning up some other destiny two things i got but that's not that's not fun to talk about youtubers know that already um i do want to go back to i do want to go back to pokemon i do want to go to kenna i know that's a a game we've not talked about since buying i started it and i did i was enjoying it i do want to go back to kenna and by go back i mean start it because i never started it (laughs) but uh i do want to go do that yeah i I do want to go do that and and i did i love love the art style i love the combat i just goodness sorry about that my dog just went crazy oh no you're good um but um, I don't know why I fell through. I think maybe something had came out at the, at the probably. Time. I I never even started because there that was that time period where just so much stuff was out, so yeah. much stuff. And also we have, hold on, no, that's not how time works. So 
not next week, but the week after, I not only have Halo Infinite, I have um, Destiny's 20th anniversary, no, 30th anniversary thing. Is that the thing where you can get the, you can get the Halo? Galahorn, yeah. yeah. December 7th. And then the next day, I have Halo Infinite's full campaign launch. So two weeks from now, I'm going to be super busy. So I got to be ready for that. And we'll have... Of course, our Halo spoiler cast when that comes mm -hmm. out. You, See, I got you Halo all Infinite that. until January. What? I got Halo Infinite's campaign until January, so I got that whole month. Yep, yep, you do. Anyways, so. Achievers, we've talked to you enough. We will be back soon. <laughs> Keep an eye on not only the podcast feed, uh, but the YouTube feed as well. We'll be updating them soon with all these shows that we got planned. So, thank you so much for listening. Remember, go Chief. Go Chief.